My friend James is a bike fitter with over 20 years of experience. In today's episode, we're gonna go over seven things that you can adjust on your bike for free. The reach to the handlebars is very often a catalyst for saddle issues as well as hand, neck, and shoulder issues. One way of reducing the reach to the handlebars could be to invert the stem. So you remove the stem, flip it upside down so that it, it possesses a positive rise. It will reduce your reach by five to 10 millimeters. In this case, on a small size bike with 110 millimeter stem, it's reduced the reach by, uh, by five mil while retaining the handlebar drop. So what we've done is taken the stem, flipped it, lowered it by 10 millimeters. So the handlebar drop being the, the difference between the, hand, the saddle and the handlebar is exactly the same, yet, the reach is shorter. Doing this is a very well, it's a free way of reducing the reach by a small amount, which could pay dividends in terms of improving your comfort. Now, this isn't something that I necessarily recommend as an optimizational change, but if you can't change your handlebars easily, particularly if you've got like a proprietary cockpit, which has got like a one piece handlebar and stem, uh, or it just represents you know, an expense to you, you could have a go at rolling the shifters in like so. What that is gonna do is gonna place your hands narrower, uh, which quite often is a very common um, change that we make in bike fittings to reduce the bar width. Uh, this could potentially make it harder for you to reach the brake levers on the drops, but what it might you might find that it'll offer you relief for uh, hand, neck, and shoulder symptoms. In order to do this, what you're gonna do, and this is the case with most shifters, is you've got a five millimeter Allen bolt in the back here. All you have to do is loosen that off adjust the shifter and tighten it back again. Uh, this will, as I say, place the shifters slightly narrower, which can potentially make it a little more comfortable for you. Free trick, give it a go. Get your saddle as level as possible. Do not drop the nose of it to relieve genital problems. What that's gonna do is result in you gravitating to the nose, which is gonna compound the issue. And do not have it nose up, because that's gonna posteriorly rotate your pelvis, which is gonna make it feel like a, a greater reach to the handlebars. You wanna try and keep it level, so you're not creating a slope, so that you fall off of it, and not creating a, a reverse slope, which is going to hyper uh, flex your spine. Get it nice and level. Uh, if this is causing you, if this starts causing you saddle issues, have a go at reducing the saddle height. If you're still having problems, have a go at changing the saddle. This may seem glaringly obvious, and uh, forgive me if I'm, it seems like I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but spending a few extra seconds putting your shoes on before you go for a ride can save you a reasonable amount of aggravation as well as potentially numb feet and numb toes as well and, uh, and pins and needles. When you put your foot into the shoe, you wanna get your foot as far back into the shoe as possible. And then when you're doing up the closure, now in this case, we've got a double boa closure. We're going to, you, you want to tighten the lowest one first, the one that is closest to the toes. In some products or some, some shoes, you'll have a Velcro strap, do that up first. Uh, with laces, you obviously want to start at the bottom. What we're trying to do is we're trying to clamp down the forefoot and stop the foot from driving into the front of the shoe. So you tighten the lowest closure up first, then finish up by tightening the upper one. That way it'll help stop the foot from driving to the front of the shoe, potentially causing you foot problems. If you're struggling to reach the brake levers on the drops, uh, this is usually driven by handlebar width. You're reaching around the handlebar to get at the brake lever. However, if you do have particularly small hands, then uh, one way of potentially improving your ability to reach the brake lever might be to re reduce the reach of the lever. How you go about doing this will vary from lever to lever. What you need to do in order to understand it is to check the model of the lever. In this case, it's a Shimano Tiagra. Uh, SRAM and Campagnolo, well actually Campagnolo doesn't have much reach adjustment to it, um, but SRAM and Shimano, they're usually noted, the model is noted on the lever itself. It might be on the blade or it might be on the top here. In this particular instance, you peel the lever back, or peel the hood back, sorry, and it's a two millimeter Allen key. And by winding that in, what you're gonna do is reduce the lever. With a rim brake system, what you might need to, what you might find that you'll need to do is to offset, uh, is to back the uh, the cable tension off on the on the caliper itself. Because as you're winding this in, you're applying tension to the cable, which means that the brake pads are going to contact the rim. So it's just something you might need to consider doing uh, is loosening off the brakes once you've done it. Again, nice and easy to reach the brake leaves from there. Give it a go. Bar rotation and control location can play a massive role in uh, how in the reach of the handlebars and how long the bike feels. So we've made this particularly bad for demonstration purposes, but what we're, what we're talking about is 
how the bar is rotated, and also where the controller is located on the handlebar. By changing this, these points, you can reduce the reach by up to 30 millimeters. The, when I'm talking about the reach, I'm talking to the back of the hood from the saddle. So what we often find with off-the-peg bikes is they're typically set up a little bit like this. Like I say, it's quite extreme. One rough guide would be to get the end of the bar perfectly vertical. So with this lovely little spirit level we've got here, bearing in mind we, we want the bike to be completely level on the floor. Get the end, get the bar end completely vertical, lock that in, and then apply your shifter to your desired angle. You want a little bit of angle, you don't want it completely flat or perpendicular to the floor uh, because you don't want to be rotating the wrist slice so, but you want it so that the, the hand meets the shifter quite nicely. Um, like I say, by doing that, what, we, what we're doing is offsetting the reach of the handlebar and it, it will potentially up, uh, reduce the reach to by up to 20 to 30 millimeters. There are some out there that talk about aligning the center of the pedal axle and also the center of the cleat with the ball of the foot. 1975 called, it wants its cleat location back. If you do that, you will get foot problems, knee problems, and probably saddle issues too. A really good hack would be to take the cleat as far back on the shoe as it'll go. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get the pressure away from the toes. Um, what this typically results in is less tension through the forefoot. It can relieve pins and needles and numb feet, but can also relieve symptoms from such as knee pain. Uh, it's worth noting that if you take your cleat from here to here, you are increasing your saddle height. So if you're taking your cleats further back, have a go at knocking the saddle down by five or 10 mil at the same time. As an aside, it's also worth thinking about stance. You can do that at the cleat by moving it from left to right. This is a left, this is a left shoe. Is it a left shoe? Um, this is a left shoe. If you move it under, if you move the cleat underneath the ball of the foot, we're stancing the foot away from the bike. So we're getting your feet further apart. Typically, uh, riders of a larger disposition are going to need this. Uh, or furthermore, if you've got, uh, if you have physiological traits known like, like, like tibial varum, which is kind of blow, a bowing of the tibia, almost always requires an increase in stance. Very, very small riders, very, very petite riders might need the other way around, get your feet close to the bike to get the foot underneath the knee, underneath the hip to kind of work on, on, on your knee alignment. Uh, so have a go at experimenting with that as well. That's seven things that you can do to your bike for free. I hope that was useful. If there's any questions, please put them in the comment section down below and I'll see if James will answer them for you. If you want to check out James's website and book a fitting with him, it will be in the description down below. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more videos like this.